The Lord of the Rings trilogy is filled with so many details, information, behind the scenes, facts, that I feel like no matter how much you watch, you always learn something new. And in this video, we wanted to point out 10 details that you can actually see in the movies, but maybe never paid attention to, and maybe now that you've seen them, you will have a hard time unseeing them the next time you watch the movies. Starting off with the Nazgul's riding gear, this is an example of a detail that once I've seen it, I can't unsee it, because part of the Nazgul riding gear actually contains the Eye of Sauron. If you look at this front part hanging down from their horses, you can see a very clear depiction of the Eye of Sauron right here. This particular image, when you can see them all lined up next to each other, it makes it very clear that it is indeed the Eye of Sauron, but in multiple cases throughout the movie, when you see them from the front, you will see that the Eye of Sauron is clearly hanging down in front of their horses. Another detail which is fairly small but something I think is really cool is that when you see the coronation of Aragorn at Minas Tirith, you can actually see in the background how the skies over Mordor has cleared from all the thunderstorms and ash and all the dark stuff that we can see in the actual movie. Chronologically, according to the books, there's roughly a month between Sauron's fall and the Black Gate's fall to the coronation, but that was obviously plenty of time for all of his darkness to clear and I think it's a really nice detail that I honestly didn't learn about until very recently. Next up we have Elrond's blessing. When Elrond is giving the fellowship his blessing, he takes his right hand from his left breast and then extends it out as you can see in the clip here. And if you look carefully you will see that both Legolas and Aragorn return the gesture while the others do not. And this makes total sense because Legolas is obviously an elf and Aragorn was raised by elves, so obviously the two of them knew how to return this blessing while the rest of the fellowship are clueless and have no idea how to react, so they don't return the gesture the same way that Legolas and Aragorn does. Next up we have one of my favorite details that once you've seen it you will definitely not unsee it, which is the fact that Legolas being an elf, is actually so light that he can walk on top of the snow. It's kind of tricky to see on these aerial shots, but there is one particular shot right here when Saruman is crashing down the snow on them, where you can clearly see that Legolas is standing on top of the snow over there while everyone else are waist deep in snow. And it honestly took me quite a lot of watches before I noticed this detail, but now it's something I definitely can't unsee. A quick stop here as I wanted to thank Audible for hooking us up with a great deal for Lord of the Rings and other books from Tolkien. As through the link in the description below, you can get a free trial, which means that not only can you listen to all of their books for free for 30 days, but you can also claim one book completely the free that you get to keep permanently and they have the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy and the Hobbit narrated by Andy Serkis himself if precious asks and he doesn't answer he eats it my precious children of Hurin narrated by Christopher Lee himself, among many other of Tolkien's books. And if you sign up, you will greatly support the channel too. Again, 30-day trial, listen to any books as much as you want, and keep one book permanently, even if you decide to cancel the trial. Link is in the description below. Next up, we have Gandalf's staff. During some parts, or potentially all parts of the movie before he becomes Gandalf the White, he actually stores his pipe inside his staff. The clearest example you can get of this is actually the first time he meets Sauron in the movie at Orthanc. In this particular angle you can see that he actually has his pipe shoved into the top of his staff for safekeeping. I'm not sure if this is the case throughout the entire movie until he falls, but it makes a lot of sense as his pipe is obviously one of his most valuable possessions. Sauron's bloody dagger in the prologue. In this particular shot where you see Sauron in Mount Doom, you can see that he's actually holding a dagger that is blooded. This is a leftover from another version of the prologue where they would actually show Sauron forging the ring by stabbing his own hand with this dagger and the blood and molten gold would then form the ring around his finger showing how the actual ring was forged by Sauron. This was all cut out of the final version but the one leftover you can see is this bloody dagger in the prologue. So the next time you watch the prologue, pay close attention to Sauron's dagger. Another detail that can be seen throughout the trilogy in multiple locations but has one clear example is the fact that the hobbits often used scale doubles when they had to show the size difference between them and for example a human or elf. But they usually CGI that out or made sure to not show their face. But in this particular scene outside the Black Gate, 
after they've spoken to the mouth of Sauron, you can see Pippin on the back of this horse with a very doll-like mask. And as you can see, it looks nothing like Pippin at all. They didn't even try to CGI that away, but obviously this is in the extended edition, so they probably weren't as picky with this kind of stuff as they were in the theatrical version. But I still think it's pretty interesting that if you look at Pippin here, he looks very, very strange, to say the least. Another interesting detail is actually at the Grey Havens. If you look carefully throughout these scenes, you will see that Sam is missing his grey vest during some particular shots here. And the backstory behind this is that for the entire first day they filmed this, at least after the lunch break, Sean Astin took off his grey vest and then forgot to put it on when he filmed the rest of the day. And they didn't notice this until Peter Jackson was reviewing the footage afterwards. This caused them to have to reshoot the entire day and the second day they had another issue where all of the footage was out of focus so they needed to have a third day where they filmed the grey havens. And even though the most of the material is taken from that third day when he had the correct outfit on, they still reused a couple of shots from that first day when he messed up with the missing grey vest. When it comes to the Urukai army, there's actually multiple details I wanted to bring up here. As if you look carefully at the different parts of the Uruk army at Helm's Deep, you will notice that they have different helmets depending on what their job is. For instance, the Berserkers have the captain's crest on top of their helmet and they also pour human blood into their helmet and put it on to put them into a Berserker rage and that's why you can see their necks being kind of bloody even before the battle because of that pouring blood. The Swordsmen, on the other hand, have these spikes on the side of their helmets which is actually meant for headbutting enemies and if they aim it correctly, they would basically poke the enemy's eyes out with a simple headbutt. So that's why the Swordsmen have those spikes on the side. Whereas for the pikesmen, the little slit in their helmet is very limited, kind of forcing them to only look up. And lastly, the sappers, which were the Uruks carrying the bombs to blow up the wall, have these huge flat parts to their helmet, which was to protect them from falling rocks or arrows. Whereas if they had another helmet, you could easily just shoot them from above, a bit like how Legolas does with the berserker, whereas the sapper helmets would actually have protected the berserker from those arrows. Lastly, and one of my favorite details in the trilogy is that after Boromir's death in the Fellowship of the Ring, you can actually see Aragorn put on his van braces to wear for himself. And he then continues to use these van braces throughout all three movies simply to honor Boromir. Something that's very easy to miss if you don't look carefully at the costuming, but a very very nice gesture from Aragorn honoring Boromir's death. But we would love to hear how many of these 10 details did you know and do you have any other details that you want to share with us in the comments below that we didn't include in the video. And also don't forget that you can get a free Lord of the Rings book through the audible link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and as always, may the orcs be with you.